I'm Peter Barcott. And I'm Kyle Fletcher. And we make music. We're trying to come up with that one hook, that one melody that gets stuck in your head and won't let go. We write, record, and submit dozens of ideas. But the truth is, most won't make it. But it only takes one. And we're going to write that one. Here comes again. Everybody knows. Life it comes and goes. Everybody knows. It comes and goes. It comes and goes. It comes and goes. All right, so I moved recently. And fortunately, I was able to get a new setup. Some nice big monitors. Got my speakers nice and wide now so I can hear things the way they're supposed to be. Sean's coming over. He's going to help me with this little guy right here to uh, tune my room. So basically get rid of all the frequencies that I can't hear with my ears or uh, help boost some things that my monitors aren't uh, giving me like they're supposed to. Today we're in Pete's little work area here for his home studio. And today we're going to try to tune his room. So what that means is we're going to apply some EQ to compensate for acoustic deficiencies in the room. There's going to be some dips in frequency response or some low end roll off, maybe some problems in the high end. So we're going to try to make an EQ preset that's going to work for him to compensate for his room so when he's mixing he doesn't have to work so hard. We're going to do that today with a little piece of software called Smart. Smart is an RTA application that is going to allow us to see the frequency response of this room with this handy dandy RTA mic right here. In rooms, you're going to have problems with the acoustic environment. Whether you have a reflective environment, whether you have a, an environment that absorbs too much sound, certain frequencies. If you have a room that has some dead spots in it or happens to absorb low end, well now your bass response is going to go away and you're going to go, where the hell is all my bass? So what's going to happen is you're going to be mixing and you're going to be boosting all this low end and then it's going to sound great in your studio because, well, you're compensating for the deficiency in your studio. Then you're going to go out to your car, you're going to go over to your buddy's place and you're going to throw it in, you're going to listen to it, and oh my god, it's going to have way too much low end. Or, for instance, you might have some problems on the high end where you have too many reflections. And when you have too many reflections, you start getting sound that's bouncing back off other walls, but that causes a phase problem more than a frequency response problem, so we're not really dealing with that today. We're just dealing with the plain fact that the room is probably absorbing certain frequencies and we're not hearing them. So we set up this laptop with this piece of software called Smart. This is what is called an RTA, a real-time analyzer. So what we're seeing here in green as I'm talking is we're seeing this reference mic that we set up in the room. This reference mic is going into this interface. This interface is connected to the computer and that's feeding signal into this program. Now what we're going to do in the program is we're actually going to generate a pink noise signal. Um, that pink noise is just kind of broadband noise that will allow us to evaluate the frequency response of the room. So what we're doing here is we have signal looping out of the interface going back into itself for a reference signal. Then we have the microphone feeding in which is what's actually happening in the room and we're comparing that against the reference signal. So let's take a look at the RTA here real quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at what's happening in this room compared to what's happening in the reference signal. So right here we can see in the green that, I don't know, let's see, let's take a look and see what frequency this is. Oh, I don't know, right around starting at about 100 hertz, we start seeing a big roll off in the room. Some of that is just the speakers that can't produce that much low end, but some of that is also this room. Then we also see a nice big dip up here around 250, so that's going to be that kind of honky mid low, low mid range that you kind of need a little of, but don't want a lot of. Then we also got another little dip up here, well, I don't know, around 2K, and then we have another dip up here around 8K. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an EQ cure that's going to compensate for these deficiencies that we're seeing here in the, in the RTA block. So we have already made a preset, and we're just going to pop that in here and see how it works. We spent a little bit of time already kind of EQing this preset and making it kind of work for the room. Now we can see what we've done is we've boosted right around here right at about that 250 mark, 220. We put a little boost down here, starting at around you know, 50 hertz or so, and we got a little boost down here to try to bring up a little bit of that low end. We got a little 1K boost to compensate for that little deficiency that we saw. And then we got another boost up here around 8K to compensate for our high end, uh, high end deficiency that we saw in the RTA. Remember everybody, when you're doing work in the studio, take a break. Have some fried green tomatoes because they're delicious. This in again, we're going to go ahead and bring the pink noise back and then we're going to take a look at the EQ uh, and take a look at the RTA with the EQ curve now. 
So we've got our EQ curve here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the RTA. So I'm going to stand out of the way of the speaker. Now we can see that we're still getting a little bit of that low end roll off, but that's okay because that's just the speakers and we may need to get a sub in here to really compensate for that because these particular speakers just don't go much below about 50 hertz. But you can see that we've definitely evened out our 250 and our 1K and our, and our 8K dip that we were previously seeing. So now that's going to create a nice EQ curve that we can use in the software that compensates for the deficiencies of this room. I'm very happy. Let's do a side by side. You hear that difference? I hear that difference. It sounds like somebody just turned the vacuum on like really loud and then they and then somebody closed the door and so you can't hear it quite as well. But seriously, in the room it sounds amazing. There was a lot of stuff that I was not hearing. So the first mixes that I did in here, I I got it all sounding awesome to my ears in here. And then I took it out in the car and I'm like, what the hell did this happen? Somebody just stuck a finger in my ear. It sounds horrible. So I knew I had a problem with that kind of stuff and that's why I had Sean come over to help me with this. But already I can tell the difference. Um, it, it's kind of a weird backwards philosophy here the way we're doing it, okay? Because I don't have actual uh, applications doing the compensation for me, so we're just using EQ to do it. So we've figured out what the problem frequencies are, and we've created a profile on a pretty flat response EQ. It doesn't add a lot of coloration, this particular EQ. So what I'm trying to do is boost those signals initially so that I'm hearing them in the room obnoxiously loud. Well, not obnoxiously loud, but louder so then I'm instinctively going to want to EQ them out. So by the end, I've EQ'd out the room, basically. And it should sound much closer to the way I think it's supposed to sound when I go take it somewhere else. Numbers, tiki, 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 come on, come on, come on. Come, what did I say? Comment. Comment, please, subscribe, tell your friends, share. Do it all. No. Crank it to 11. some fried green tomatoes because they're delicious.